Yeah, um, backed off today, didn't scrimmage. I, I really felt uh, I've gotten some good work the last couple Saturdays, so I just didn't want to push the envelope too much. Glad that we didn't really because we had a couple guys get nicked up out there today. Nothing serious, just some bangs here. A couple uh, um, mild issues, but made some position changes this week that have gone really, really well. Moved Jamario Bell back to defense, um, put him at our outside uh, linebacker at the hog position, and uh, he kind of looked at me at first, wasn't all that excited. Uh, talked to him and mom, and he made a transition and probably had a – as good a practice on Thursday as he's had in his career here. Just just really excited about that move. A lot of good plays out there again today. Move Michael Taylor from outside backer down into the defensive end uh, position. He took to that really well. Really well. He tried it uh, as a stand-up guy for us, but that wasn't where his heart was, and, and it actually really performed a lot better once we moved him. So that's there. Carl Rossler, obviously, we moved out to outside backer two weeks ago, and that's went well as well. Um, other than that, that's probably it from about positional changes. Um, uh, continue to rotate some guys around in the offensive line. Got Paul Ramirez back with us uh, at tackle, um, and he worked both left and right. Uh, Frank worked today because it wasn't a scrimmage. It was nice to see that one old line out there working together. Um, so excited about that. Um, and and uh, we've got really all phases of the game in now. Um, kids have really been locked in well. I think the Tuesday's practice, I backed off one helmet, so we are only out on the field for about 15 periods. And to be quite honest, that was probably one of our worst practices of the year, and it was really because I think our guys enjoy practicing in pads. You know, we were in helmets only that naturally slowed them down a little bit and, and um, uh, challenged them to have a great Thursday and Saturday and did that. So now we go into our last week. Um, we'll, we'll have a pretty pretty intense practice on Tuesday, Thursday, probably go half pack, and then Saturday, uh, you know, the, the, the spring game scrimmage. So we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, other than that, open it up. What's that? Yep, Blake's back from extreme timeout. Uh, he did a really nice job Tuesday. Actually punted the ball well today. We were inside, uh, but he hit the ball really, really well on Tuesday. So um, I think he, he also sent me a nice message and, and delivered uh, uh, um, some things. I think maturity-wise, if he can hold them up, could, could be one of the best things that happened to him. Kind of had Eugene all over the yeah, where, where good point. Him? Nate, we've, we moved him to outside backer. He's playing uh, to the field outside backer and, and really uh, has played pretty well. Um, I think that's probably a natural position for him. You know, he was a former safety in high school and uh, just bless him. He is extremely, he's a pleasing soul, does a lot. Of, you know, probably one of the more conscientious guys on our team, and I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I see. I think him and Randy could be a nice little tandem out to the field there. What kind of improvement have you seen from Michael Pepper this spring? You know, um, I, I like what Mike has done. You know, he's a guy, when we had our January meeting, I kind of challenged him, hey, this is a, this is a time where either – you're either going to go forward or you're going to go backwards. You've got a great opportunity. We lost a lot of senior players at that position, and he really has stepped up. He's caught the ball well. Uh, he still has some moments uh, that, that he's got to get better uh, mentally just knowing what we're doing and converting certain things. But I think overall you would say he probably has had a good spring. And what will um, Jonathan Mance's status and yeah, good point. Day status be? Yep, great point. Uh, Jonathan actually practiced – a little bit Tuesday, a lot on Thursday, and was full go today. Uh, so he's back out there, uh, probably a little faster than we thought. Um, and then uh, Jay Day's out there, but again, he's probably about 75, 80 percent, you know. And I just want to see that kid. You know, he's been unfortunately banged up here or there. You know, every time he makes a step forward, he, he tends to get a little something banged up injury wise. So um, he's he's had a great attitude. He's working, and and uh, um, hopefully he'll be able to go full go by next Saturday. Yeah, he just banged it up. Well, you know what, Johnny Gibson, to be quite honest, um, you know, I think as a coach, I always assess uh, where we're at and where we're going, and he's a guy that I really wanted to put the screws to um, maturity-wise and development-wise, and uh, he's had a really good spring. He actually just gave fifth quarter cheer and uh, gave a message to the guys that I thought was really, you know, he's thinking right. Um, uh, Yelda has continued to make really good strides. I think Yelda is going to be a, a very, very uh, improved player from what you saw a year ago. I think he could be a, a very special player after his career, you know, when his career is done here. Um, um, B. Wall unfortunately banged up his uh, 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 just had a bruise on his arm so he's been a little bit limited this week um, but he made some strides um, and then Zach Rogers again he's just a he's kind of like a Swiss Army knife you know he can use him for everything he, he's a little he does all kinds of great things great effort very intelligent um, I'm excited about his growth who's one right tackle if Wallace isn't in there um, well Paul Ramirez uh, um, uh, took the majority of the reps there today um, uh, Dalton Wagner is probably of the three guys that uh, you know came in. He's the one that showed the most 
Um, probably uh, a possibility of playing next year as a true freshman. Um, he gets it. He's intelligent. He's tough. He's gifted. Um, so he's been working there as well as a number two. Since we won't get, get you before uh, the red white game, do you have a format in mind? Kind of how you think that's yep. going to we'll, we'll go ones against the world, uh, somewhat. We'd be done. We actually, well, obviously, you guys saw us. The, the, the scrimmages will go all that one way, you know, so uh, the flow of the scrimmage will be a little bit unique in that regards. But. Uh, the ones will be, and uh, all their traditional scoring, and all the twos or, or the threes when they're in there against the ones, their scores will double. Uh, we'll have a, a rapid fire field goal at the end of the first and end of the third quarter. Um, first half, I plan on being pretty good, you know, traditional football, and we'll see where we're at at halftime and make some adjustments and go from there. How much has spring practice eradicated kind of the way the season Yeah, I, I, I think. First, we know when we came back in January, I said these are the lessons we had to learn. You know, um, we can't ignore them like they weren't there. We can't act like they didn't happen, and they have to do things to turn a negative to a positive. So we really stress to our guys, and they have been. They've been in very, uh, uh, very, very eager group. They're hungry. Um, uh, they're very coachable. I think this group. It was kind of fun to have a couple coaches in here last month or so. That uh, a good buddy of mine, Troy Calhoun from Air Force, came in, and you know, to always hear another head coach come in and say some things that they observe is positive, and there's been some other guys that have come through just physically. I had a coach from Pittsburgh any other day that I admire and respect greatly that, that made kind of the same comment, just the way our guys look, act, and looked, act, and practice. Um, so I think they're, they're positive things. It's not something we bring up daily, you know, but, but there's definitely it's there. Smith said he wanted to see uh, no turnovers from running backs the rest of the way, so how did today go along? It was pretty good, you know, um, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody take off on a lap today, so I don't think there was one ball on the ground. Um, been pretty conscientious about it. We did a, we did a, um, a pretty high intense uh, ball security drill right after uh, break today when they're tired. That was what we stressed and moved that ball security drill to the end of practice, so they have to do it when they're tired. Uh, and then on Thursday, we actually flipped. Offensive players went down and worked on defense, and defensive players went down and worked with the offensive coaches. So the offensive coaches taught our defensive guys ball security. Um, uh, how to uh, how to secure a ball after a catch, tip ball drill, uh, and then on defense, uh, the offensive coach, the defensive coaches taught the offensive players two tackle circuits, uh, and then a ball uh, recovery drill when the ball's on the ground, how to fish, how to how to properly recover it. So uh, it's kind of been a fun fun week for us there. Well, when we, you know, obviously we work on the SEC. I think if you're one of the best in the SEC, you got a chance to be the best in the country and. Those two guys, man, they're, they're very gifted. Um, Raleigh probably has shown me that he's got a little bit more uh, patience than we've ever seen, and, and, and that's a good thing on some of the on the wider plays. Uh, Devois, as we all know, is very gifted. I tell you, a guy that's been very impressive is, has been Malik Williams. Um, he's a tough, uh, probably a little bit more thicker uh, running back, but he's had a really nice spring as well. Those three guys, uh, in addition to Jay Day, and we'll see where Chase Hammond, or when, when Chase Hayden comes in. Raleigh and, and Devois. Uh, I want to. They got to get good at football. Um, uh, I don't think. Uh, now maybe after the first half we might make some adjustments. But again, I think fo- first half football. The only guy that I'll probably limit in any regard will be Jay Red and, and Frank. Jay Red was back out there running around today as well. He's not fully cleared, but he was out there running. You know, I think they're going to see the improvement of certain guys. I think offensively, Austin's throwing the ball really well. They don't know any of our wide receivers, so to see new guys, Brandon Martin and uh, uh, Jonathan Nance and, and the development of Michael Petway and Deion Stewart has been very, very uh, significant. I think that's good. I think they'll like Malik Williams. and Everybody gets excited with the new running back. I think the number two quarterback has been a lot of fun to watch. Um, uh, both uh, Ty and Cole do some really good things, and then they'll have a – uh, they'll have one of their moments uh, and, and, and got to grow from it. But I thought Ty today was very, very efficient, made a nice ball down the field and um, like where he's going. But it's going to be fun to watch that two quarterback battle out. Uh, and then on defense, just to get a look at the 3 4, we probably won't you know, bring a, a large number of pressures or change ups, but uh, they'll see how we line up and you'll see guys make a play. Um, it's been fun to watch this group, uh, especially some of the younger guys playing new positions coming to their own. Yeah, we, we've uh, um, uh, probably backed off a little bit this last week just because we want to get good at what we've been doing. Um, but next week we'll probably uh, – we've doing a lot of scout work, uh, working against opponents that are uh, on our schedule that we don't run somewhere offense as. And 
Uh, we've gone two periods each day, uh, so 20 minutes work out of an hour and 45 minute practice is pretty significant. So uh, we've been doing a lot of that work, and, and uh, it's been fun to watch that part. But I know we'll kind of take a moment. Uh, uh, Paul and I have a pretty good throttle on what we want to get through these first five weeks, and we'll we'll kind of look where we're at at the end of spring ball. I would probably let Austin take the entire first half unless something uh, changes my mind, and they would take all the all the twos, and, the, and then I probably, if I'm if I'm a betting man, I might remove uh, Austin, you know, fairly fairly early in the second half, and not all of it. He's he's a very good player. <coughs> You know, I, I, Tom, you guys obviously have been around the program. He hasn't done anything significant to this point, and he's just been one of those guys. I've always really liked his demeanor, his attitude. When we recruited him, I, I thought, uh, here's a big guy. You know, he's 310 pounds, 315 pounds now. He threw a guy down today in one on ones, was very impressive. He used his hands. Uh, he was going against Colton. Um, he's got a lot of power, and, and yeah, I, I could see him being a starter, and not a, if not a guy who plays a significant amount of time. Mike was over um, kind of on that left side. You know, I got Sosa, uh, um, Briston, and Michael, kind of all similar guys, you know, those guys that uh, are kind of quick twitch and, and uh, similar body type, similar skill set. The right side has just been a little bit bigger now in the fall. We'll, we'll obviously have our best three and then our next best three and so forth. But uh, just getting those guys familiar right now is what the main goal has been. How has Randy looked this spring? And what's it been like for you to sort of watch him? Randy Ramsey. Randy Ramsey, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, two things. Um, we had our academic meeting on Thursday, and he's set to have the best academic semester of his career. And I, I don't think that happens by chance. I think he's uh, taken a huge step in maturity. Um, he came to my office the other day, and there was an uh, opportunity for extra credit, and he went to that. I mean, just, just maturity-wise, I've seen him uh, take a big step. And, and um, he's an intense guy. He goes out there and likes the, uh, likes the game, I think. But um, he's a guy that I, I – I, uh, I really feel can have a big jump in the fall, and a guy that athletically can—he's got a knack for rushing the passer. That's for sure. He's—he's he's got very, very long arms. He's a long athlete uh, that's got good power and can run. So I, I'm excited. Did all your about Rico? What have you seen? Yeah, you know we've limited him the first uh, week. Rito didn't scrimmage in the first first scrimmage, but we let him scrimmage after that. And you know he's a—he's long for a corner. He—he um, uh, he is, uh, um, I think, a diligent guy. You know he—he he wants to get out there. He knows it. He's got to take advantage of his reps and his opportunity. I think him and Nate Dalton have got a lot. Uh, they're battling out for that number four, number five corner spot. The offensive line improved with age. I think they just improve a practice. I think Kurt does a tremendous job. Um, he's really got their ear. I, you know, I always major, major a coach by what he makes a senior who's a pretty good player become. And I thought the growth and development of Dan Skipper, and now it's – now I'm seeing it in Frank Ragnar. I'm seeing it in Yelda for Holt. I'm seeing it in Johnny Gibson. I'm seeing it in Colton Jackson's had a nice spring. Uh, again, Brian Wallace has done some good things. He's got to keep coming along. But Paul Ramirez took a big step, um, uh, even after uh, coming back from the uh, the funeral of his grandmother. He's real close to. So I, I like what that group's doing. Diam Malone is another guy that um, uh, uh, Jackson. Uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Dylan Hayes. Uh, is a guy that probably could help us in certain regards. And again, Zach Rogers, just a jack of all trades. It's it's fun to watch that group work. You know, Jake's been doing a nice job. Um, he's kind of been that ambidextrous guy as well. We popped him out of guard, popped him in a tackle. He's playing center. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, today he did have a little, uh, get, not a serious injury, but we had to hold him out today and should be back on Tuesday. But um, again, another guy, just he's a pleaser. You know, he's put on about 15, 20 pounds. I think we've uh, covered that once in here as well, but um, I just think he's trying, and, and and I like his attitude. How do you evaluate Kyrie Fisher's spring so far? Yeah, Kyrie's been fun, man. He's uh, first as a linebacker coach. I'm an old linebacker coach. He loves the game. He loves contact. Um, he's not afraid to hit people. Um, uh, very explosive player. Has made some nice run throughs. One one bad habit we're trying to break out of him is a lot of his family were out there today. He he has a tendency. Um, I think he was able to do it in high school. He runs behind some blocks. When he feels that 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 uh, he can't get over the top where we need him, he'll he'll duck under and run. And obviously the players here are a lot faster, so he's making strides in that regards um, uh, in playing within the scheme. But he's a he's a he's a he's a, a nice asset to the program. He's a fun guy to watch. You know, um, I'd say it's been kind of a mixed bag. I've gotten calls on on uh, uh, Keon Hatcher, Drew Morgan. Um, 
Uh, I've gotten calls on Cody House, who's having a little pro day on Monday. Um, uh, I had a call last week, a couple calls on Sprink, uh, Skipper. I think some of these guys are unique markets, you know, like uh, the team that probably grabs Sprink is someone that traditionally uses a tight end like we do that uh, I'd be shocked if it wasn't someone that's in that traditional. Um, I know it's kind of buyer's remorse, you know, just because uh, obviously uh, uh, there's a couple good tight ends in this draft, but but – you know, I keep thinking Hunter's probably better than all. It was just amazing to see that there might be two, three Titans going that first round where Hunter would have been, you know. Um, uh, I, I'd be surprised, too. There's some people that like lead better and wise. It's, it's uh, and again, there's, there, there's I think a, a guy like Brooks Ellis, he's just, he's so uh, conscientious. He can play so many different positions. He might be a guy that somebody really likes and grabs him in the fourth or fifth, you know. So um, it, it'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, you know, I kind of stumbled into that uh, um, during my time at, at the other place. I always – we develop our kids a little bit longer. I really believe in an eight-week uh, winter program, which always puts our spring game as one of the last. And I think there's four or five today, right? I know that uh, uh, I saw some games on last night. So, um, I, I think it will. We, we've got a good crew lined up. We had a good recruiting weekend this weekend. And then uh, next week, weekend will be really, really a, a nice – We've kind of made a huge emphasis on that, especially with our class that's just signed with us coming in as well. You mean spring games? Yeah, well, it's again, it's exposure, you know. Um, uh, we've tried to do something every year to kind of spice it up a little bit. I know it's it's not quite the same for the fans, you know, as far as a regular game day atmosphere, but if you're a fan and you love it and, and you're a a parent, you don't get to see your kid all that much uh, play out there. It's a big deal. I think I, I, the reason I go ones against the world is I want that continuity to develop. So our one offense, our one defense works against each other. We don't, I don't vary from that too often. And I think that that I think that's a positive step uh, for for that unit. But um, again, it's it's uh, it's just kind of a glorified practice for us. I don't think I should comment on anything. Uh, thanks for starting to fire it up. I appreciate it. <laughs>